Hi, it's Jen and Bethany here with you again. A super fun project. This is another Lila Bell Lane creation project called Be Happy Pincushion. And it is just, it is adorable. This needs to be in my sewing room. Watercolor Beauty is on deck for the fabrics we chose for this project. In the beginning, Fabrics, Jason Yenner, an amazing design company. We just thought it just worked beautifully with the design and there's an added element in the very center of hand embroidery. It's fairly simple stitches. I see Lazy Daisy, uh, there's a French knot, and then there's just a cute little bee. We've even made kits available for you Watercolor beauties included everything that you're going to be needing, except of course the walnut shells mm -hmm. and the other notions on the table. Bethany will be walking us through each step of the way. Uh, the pattern even includes the templates and English paper piecing papers mm -hmm. that we'll be using. I love they give us a generous amount of papers every time so that we can make the project more than one time. You might have seen this one with, uh, this one's called Tenderness. Tenderness, yep. tenderness pincushion. Yep. It's a bigger one, as you can see them side by side, quite a bit. Uh, three bags of walnut shells, mm -hmm. one bag one of bag walnut of shells. shells yeah. So depending on what you're going for, you know, I know people have lots of different pincushions. It's almost fun to collect them. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes pinning a lot more fun when you get to put them inside a pretty pincushion. With English paper piecing, we know there's two techniques. There's the machine mm -hmm. version and hand version. You've done both. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got pros and cons to both, but we're gonna bias probably a lot of the video. I'll just be asking you questions yeah. on that. So if you're wanting to use uh, the machine version, obviously faster, um, we'll talk about that. But maybe you wanna learn what traditional English paper piecing is all about and do this project by hand. So Bethany, um, Talk us through, if somebody um, preparing, mm -hmm. how do I use these templates and my beautiful fabric? How do I even jump into this project? Okay, so regardless of if we're gonna piece this by machine or by hand, uh -huh. um, we will need to make some of our pretty shapes that we see here uh, wrapped around the paper pieces that come in the pattern. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna have the heptagon and then seven petals. We're also gonna to have to cut a few of our own shapes. There are templates in here to trace that. Uh, and we'll wanna do that on something heavy like a cardstock. Uh, we have the Cut Right Freezer Paper. Okay. Okay, it's heavy duty, we can use it a couple times. It's not flimsy like regular freezer paper. Right. Um, and then we are going to want to cut our shapes so we can like cut our fabric with the template that's in the pattern here. So we're gonna cut our shapes from the template here. I've added a little grip dot to this. Okay. Okay, just to make it easier. Yes, and then not sliding around. I tried this by, because um, you know it is a ruler that we could cut against. I tried it with the ruler. I found it just safer and easier to trace around the edge with a pin and go and go in with scissors sure. and cut that by hand. That okay. makes sense. You know, while she's cutting that out, the I see the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. I know when I'm doing those turns. It just seems like that 28 millimeter is able to easily navigate smaller diameter of that blade. So I agree though, because these are smaller shapes, I too would be taking that trace and cut approach mm -hmm. as well. But certainly for some of these other shapes that are around the sides, perhaps using yeah, that really absolutely might come really into play there. That. Maybe it's a mixing and a matching mm -hmm. of the, of the two. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we'll wanna take our piece here and you can see that that seam allowance, that quarter inch was included in the little template we have here. And then we're going to want to fold this paper around this template to get it precise to that shape. Okay. Of the okay. Ooh, I know where we're going with we're this. Going with the glue stick. Traditionally, <laughs> traditionally <laughs> you, you do this by hand with a needle and thread and you baste it by hand. Um, I'm gonna use glue. So I just go around the edge and I'll, I like to start in my roundest corners here and kind of come around and I'm just pulling that down. I want that curved edge to hopefully not have any like sharp mm. points in it, okay? So it's smooth on the front smooth side. Smooth on the front. So if I flip this over, I flip this over, there we go. It's beautiful. It's completely round, it's got that guitar pick shape. And then if I am piecing these by hand, yep. I am gonna come and do this last little edge folded over. 
Uh, yes, it's been a few years since I've done one by hand, and I okay. remember that's a difference. <laughs> yeah, that because they're 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 butting up to each other, mm -hmm. so they everything is turned under. Yeah. If I am doing these by machine, the machine method for piecing these down, uh, I would leave the little tails long mm, here. Okay. They're going to scoot under the next piece. Okay, okay. so there's some differences right there mm -hmm. already. Nice. Um, our heptagon shape here. Um, I've already pulled the paper out of this one, but this would either rest on top or nestle like right against, okay? I think one of the main things I discovered when we started doing English paper piecing by machine, because we're such busy women, right? Mm -hmm. we, I, I want to make all the projects, uh, but there's other things I need to do too, you as well. Um, if we're going to be doing the sewing version, I think we're always going to take the papers out before we engage with the sewing. Absolutely. But with the traditional English paper piecing, with the deco bob mm -hmm. hand sewing, are we keeping the papers in? So I'm keeping the papers in, but like in, if you see here, we're not English paper piecing this curve to the background. Like it, we have to take the paper out to get this onto mm. the fabric. Okay. Okay. A um, couple different ways to do that. You can take the paper out. You know, when we glue this down. That's adding some reinforcement when we're pressing it with an iron. Mm -hmm. That's keeping its shape. Um, so we can safely take the papers out. I've done that here, and it'll keep its shape. Oh, nice. I don't have to worry about that unfurling at all, unless right. I spill water on it, and I might have to start over. Um, but we'll take the papers out for machine piecing, English paper piecing by hand. I'll leave them in until I'm ready to applique it, and I'll take them out right after I, okay. right before I put all them down. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go for, I think these are other papers. Uh, let's go for, we're busy women. I love sewing, hand sewing, but I think we need to go with the, the sewing version. Okay. You know what? I know you did bring out the one, you included that one that you did by hand. I'd love to show off your points of okay. you did on the other oh. one you prepared. Oh, yes. I love what, I mean, look at the difference from the overhead. Granted, this has walnut shells in it, so it's going to be a little more um, rounded. But look how the points did come out a little more succinct mm -hmm. with the hand yeah. sewing. Machine, so, hand. Yeah, by hand, I could get my seams really crisp. Uh, on my machine, especially like here and here, uh, I couldn't get the points out because I couldn't get my needle close enough to mm -hmm. the edge. I had all these Y seams. I had four different seams coming together. Not flat, but you know, three-dimensional. Um, I just struggled with it, but I wanted to get it done fast. And, and it, I wanted it, to, and it's beautiful. Yeah, do do it. You know, teach myself how to do that so that it could be an option for our, our mm -hmm. customers as well. Um, I love the look of the English paper piecing here. I just think it's so much more beautiful, but it's so much more work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so we're gonna fill that one. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to compare them side by side, mm -hmm. and you can make the decision either way. You're gonna have a beautiful pin cushion. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna take the approach of, gosh, I have so many projects on deck. I need to take the sewing version. What's my next step now to get this top? Kind of, I, I'm assuming the top is what we're going to build first. Correct. Um, so let's get our flower built. We have um, an oversized piece of fabric here. The pattern will have your template on what to cut this down to. But I like to build this whole top portion oversized. And I've also lined this with some interfacing. Mm. Um, I believe that will be included in the kit. It's going to be in the kit because mm -hmm. you've said it's such an important part mm -hmm. to reinforce the structure. Yeah. This is going to be used. <laughs> and We're not going to baby so this. It's so beautiful. I don't want it to have any kind of compromise in there. Yep. So my English paper pieces, uh, we'll call them the floral prints on the top here. I'm not putting extra interfacing on. But my background white fabric, my sides and the bottom, I will use interfacing because that's that's the integrity and the structure of yep. my whole pin cushion here. That'll be in your so kit. That's on here already. and. We're going to start building this in. I think I have papers already taken out of these here. And if I cut these with the ruler, the bottoms of these should all line up together, yeah? Mm. Okay. So I'll usually lay them out first and then go in and glue them down with the glue stick. Okay. okay. And you can see the arrangement and mix mm -hmm. and match. Do you like all, you know, spreading out the colors? Do we see any grouped colors? Like I would switch this one. Uh, that's the yeah. designer, right? Right. So there's a blue over there and a purple over here. Mm -hmm. But these will all nestle together, seven petals all nestle together. Um, and once I like my arrangement, then I'm gonna glue these down. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe I actually 
put my white piece here on top as well, glued down. Of course, these sit a little flatter once you have them of glued. Of course, they're pressed, glued down. Mm -hmm. um, at my machine, if I did this by machine, I use a really tiny zigzag stitch. Um, oh, I, yeah. I wouldn't know what the numbers are off the top right. of my head, but. And, yep. Um, and I know you use the deco the bob. The deco bob thread. It's an 80 weight, super fine thread. It's almost like hard to see on the camera. Let's see. Overhead. And strong. That's the main mm -hmm. thing. This is not a cotton thread. Yeah, I think polyester. it's a polyester. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost just like melts into the fabric. If they do the sewing version, um, did you put the deco bob in the bobbin or just on the top? Both. So it's top thread and bobbin thread. Okay. I did this by machine. And I actually did hand piece my English paper piecing with this as well. Oh, very so versatile. I found it was very fine. It just glided through the fabric. It uh, was very strong. So all my seams on this one here, I did with a deco bob as well. I found it just beautiful for English paper Wow. Piecing. And I know we've got a neutral set. I've heard people say this is the go-to product for English paper piecing. Okay. I see why. Yeah. You can barely see it even yeah. when you're trying to thread. <laughs> it just disappears. Okay. So um, I believe this one here, I did do a zigzag stitch and we'll get a close-up shot of that. Um, just really, really mm -hmm. tiny, really narrow to get that down. Okay. Okay. Um, with the little trapezoids around the edge as well, um, one thing I found, because there wasn't like a template to lay this down in, in, uh, in the pattern to line these up. Um, I found that my little wedges here or like my hexagon have to... I don't know. Trapezoid, right? Um, they were about a quarter inch from the edge of the petal and I found that the like joints where the two seams came together should line up exactly with where the petals came together. And I know I did see, as I look through, I've not made this project, mm -hmm. I did see this shape. Is there any function we can do with our freezer paper to create, well, you did make that template. Yeah. That's right. So That's right. I mean, I can, I can actually lay this down on top, trace oh. around, and if I want to get my petals on here, um, I could, uh, again, the points of this is where my seams, where my two flowers would come together would be. Here. Nice. Should we just glue some of that down? Yeah, well, Why don't we just do that? I think yeah. that might just there's less moving around. That'd be kind of fun. Less we'll imagination. We gotta we can actually visualize it here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So before I even trim my fabric away, I'll trace around and get this all glued down. I like how you left your fabric. I would have. I I know I would have ended up probably trimming it to that exact size. It's nice having something more to trim later. Uh, I, I call it insurance. You know? <laughs> there you I, go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the frame first. And that's the thing that we discover when we make projects is, you know, what's the best approach? I'm sure as you've been walking, as she's laying those shapes down, you, you try to figure out what's the best approach. In fact, I just did a pint-sized table runner uh, video. And sometimes as I'm working through the construction, do I wanna use this approach to making half square triangles? Or do I wanna use that type of approach because we know there's different ways to approach almost every project. Mm -hmm. So I like what you're doing, kind of building the frame because that is hard and fast. If yeah. we don't build the frame this size, the side the side pieces won't fit. Correct. So I think this drawing the shape on first is gonna be pretty important. Yeah, so, for, so when I did this by machine, um, I, did the frame first and then the flowers. When I did this by hand, I did the flower first, did my embroidery, and then pieced these together, mm. the, the little tiny seams here, and got a whole ring of these, and then I positioned that on top. So this was a, a ring mm -hmm. detached from this background. Correct. Uh, and that allowed you to be able to remove the papers, and then it went down. Correct. Ah, so yeah. this is a difference. Again, if you wanna take the more traditional approach to English paper piecing, and do that hand sewing. Just some different techniques, leaving the paper in, this ring would be coming together separately with these being sewn. Um, just these portions though, mm -hmm. those short sides, building that ring, removing the papers, and then that's gonna be placed down. And probably at that point, you're still gonna be gluing that down, wouldn't you? Yeah, I did glue. Yeah. Um, even and when I did it by hand, I, I used a bit of glue to kind of keep this all together. Oh, I love that. I love, now I know my boundaries, mm -hmm. and now it's easier to, to understand the distance to build the center. Mm -hmm. 
I right. like that. All right, so like I said, my petals go about a quarter inch. Okay, you're right, you're right yeah. in the mark at so, a quarter. quarter inch or so from the edge, and we'll get it hopefully right in between. This glue is very forgiving, it's repositionable, so let's get one down I agree and build everything from there and see. <laughs> I was doing, while she's gluing that down, I don't know if you've had a chance to see a Plum Easy Fold, in, it was our, our hot pad. Okay. Fold, I can't even think of the name right Fold now. Fold Star Hot Pad? Fold Star Hot Pad, uh, where you're gluing, it's it's this amazing folding technique and you're gluing everything down and I did it in some wrong sequence with this glue and it was so forgiving. I was able to yank everything up and not ruin my template, which is needed, so. We'll continue to glue those down. Again, I'm always going about a quarter inch from the edge and getting beautiful that to line up. And yeah. so we'll just keep that going. The center would go down with that. Or do mm -hmm. you do, would you recommend, Bethany, before they even put the center, to start stitching around all of those petal shapes? I don't think I did. Okay. Um, I would say personal preference on that whatever you'd like to do. Um, I believe I stitched, you know, kind of around everything. And then when I got back to my starting point, let's say I had my piece here. I started here, went all the way around, got here, and then just carried my thread around that. Oh, uh, very good. Okay, so I, I basically, for, for the entire flower, did not cut my thread except for my start and my nice. beginning one time. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we can see you keep mm -hmm. adding your petals. This is going to go down where you would stitch that down with the deco bob mm -hmm. at that point and then do the hand embroidery after that. Yeah, so once this is all complete, um, then I will hand embroider. Gotcha. Okay? And that's, I'm not an expert in that. You are much better at that. So I would love for you to show us. I'd love to. Uh, we've got some yes. threads and some fabric there. Let's do that. So we're gonna, she will keep getting those petals down for us. So after the embroidery, we come back um, the petals will be uh, down, just so it, it's complete. Mm -hmm. And then you can talk to us about how we kind of manage the sidewalls, the back, and then filling our pincushion, yeah. we'll finish it up. So we'll take just a second, we'll try to get as close as we can of a bird's eye view of the stitching. Again, even if you don't want to do hand embroidery while it's, uh, the embroidery floss is including your kit, this is still going to be a beautiful pin cushion, even if you don't include that. So please don't stress about that if you don't want to do hand embroidery or you maybe you feel you're not good at that. But I'm going to help walk you through and show you how simple and fun it actually is. So the hand embroidery for that center is very simple. Again, we have lazy daisies, French knots. This cute little bee is just made with some straight stitches in the yellow. And then we came back with the black. And I don't know if you can pick it up. It's very, very subtle with the wings being a really small Lazy Daisy. So let's just start with the Lazy Daisy. I have my embroidery floss again included in your kit. The needle, this is the Richard Hemming size four. It's a great size, super affordable, just a few dollars. One of these packs will last you for such a long time. Um, by the way, if I didn't mention it, um, if you are gonna take this the hand sewing version of English paper piecing with the deco bob, the straw needles are what you want. The eye is so small, even with that, it's slippery and the deco bob, um, you know, you need to be careful you don't unthread the needle. But these needles are just too, the eye is too big for the deco bob. Perfect for what we're gonna do right now. Lazy Daisy, I've just added a knot to the end. I've got two to three strands depending on the bulk you want of the stitch. We're going to create our flower working from the center out. Looks like there's seven petals here. You could do six if you want. I tend to just go for that, or if you want to draw some light marks on your fabric to represent where that will be. If you do that, be sure to use a temporary marking pen like a friction pen. I've come up and I'm gonna go right back down in the needle and the hole where I uh, came up. And I'm trapping that embroidery floss with my thumb here. And I'm gonna decide on that distance that I want to travel away from my center point. And I'm just gonna create a little teardrop. Now, if you pull too hard, that will become quite closed off. 
So you can decide how open you want your petal to be. And that's the first petal. We'll go back to the center. The center will always be our starting place. And we'll come up. Once again, I'll just demonstrate that. I've trapped the embroidery floss in my, under my thumb. The goal is to try to have nice, even, unless you want that to be different lengths, the nice, even distance so that you have uh, nice symmetry with your flower. And you would continue all the way around. You can imagine that's going to create quite a bit of, of um, oh, buildup of the embroidery floss on the background. And that's another reason that we like to add a lining to this, just to add a little bit of bulk, um, a little strength. There's a lot going on here with this embroidery floss. Now I'm going to tie this off. I want to show you the French knot. After you do all of your petals of your flowers with your Lazy Daisy, we will come back. Sometimes I have to move that where I came up initially off to the side just to create the space. Let's see here, what did I do with this one? Looks like when I tied off, and that happens sometimes if you tie off and you pull too tight, it can flatten the stitch. You can go back and kind of refresh that stitch though. We'll come up from the center You will pull the thread, if you're right-handed, off to the left. The needle is in the front, wrapping around once, maybe twice, if you want a denser uh, knot, if I want a larger diameter. Holding that, trapping that, until you have to let it go. And that's our flower center. For our B, as you can see here, it's kind of some very close um, what we call satin stitches. So this one's a little interpretive to create our B body. Just stacking them right on top of each other so that you no longer see the background. You can make your B Oh, three or four rows of that stitching. I'll tie that off. When you tie off, generally try to tie off twice. We certainly plan to use our pin cushion and we don't want anything coming apart after all of the beautiful work you've done. Once that part is done, We'll grab the black and just put a knot in the end of that. And we're just going across the body to be, of course, our stripes. Without all of our wonderful bees, we wouldn't have all of our beautiful flowers. They are a very important part of our world. So I love that that that's included in the design. And that's all you need to do for that. And again, the little tiny lazy daisies. So that's all there is to the embroidery. Again, you want to skip that part, or maybe you want to go practice on something. I'd love to encourage you to, to give it a try. Um, we are going to connect back with Bethany, and I know she's uh, working to complete that top. And I know she's going to talk us through the sides our back, and then we get to fill our pincushion with our favorite uh, either scented or unscented walnut shells. So let's check back with Bethany. All right. Thank you for showing us that embroidery. Yes, I okay. love doing it in embroidery. I got this a little more assembled while you were doing that, and you may notice that I have unfolded my turned under edge on three of these, okay? I did. I want to show you what's going on here. Oh, I, had I, a, I had a thought, and I was like, I forgot to show this. Okay. 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 So if we are English paper piecing by hand, we're gonna leave these pieces here turned under. This is our finished size, right? Mm -hmm. And I would trim my background to exactly the size of the top. Yeah. 
Right. And I want to make sure I don't trim these off. These kind of uh, this would leave me a raw edge if I trimmed off the little ears here. Oh! Okay. But if I'm piecing this by machine, okay, I have to have a seam allowance. This is my finished size. It doesn't include a seam allowance, so I have uh -huh. to unfold that. Okay, that's why you unfold. <laughs> hey. I'm like, what? It, that didn't look like it's that like, when I left for embroidery. I, I think I I gotta walk them through this. Okay. Okay. So well, I still like my template here. I'm still gonna get this lined up. Now. If I had all seven of these unfolded, what I would do is get my points lined up on the lines. Okay. So on three sides here, it's gonna run right to the edge. Mm. Okay. We're gonna make sure these points are lined up on the lines. And what I found was easiest to get my seam allowance was to draw in my line here, and I don't need it to go all the way across. Okay. Draw that line in, and then take my ruler, and I'm gonna do this on each side cut a quarter inch oh my gosh. outside of that. Here we go. Okay. And I'm trimming off a little bit, but it's not the, you know, the part of the fabric that keeps this all together. Okay. It just got real. All right, I know. <laughs> right into the, you're like, did we say we were gonna do that? Okay. <laughs> so now, so if I'm English paper piecing, we're gonna, we're gonna have two different projects here in our mind, yeah? All right, this okay. one is traditional English paper mm -hmm. piecing. Machine piece on this side. Got okay. it. So I'm trying to keep up right now. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. This is my finished size. We've wrapped the paper. We would sew this to our ends all the way around. And you'd kind of get this little, like, almost another flower shape because you'd have all seven of these. Okay. That's only for English paper, paper piecing. piecing. Okay. Okay. Um, if we are doing this by machine, Again, this is the finished side, so we have to go up a half inch or a quarter inch on each side from this. There is no paper, but it's oversized now. And now that edge is gonna go right where my seam allowance is. Okay. So did I get that right, that if I'm gonna do the sewing version of this, I don't need to cut these rectangles out? Correct. Oh, but I do need to upsize this. what's in the pattern by a half an inch longer and half an inch wider. Yes. Quarter okay. inch all the way around. I would say you still have to cut your little trapezoids out. Yes. Because uh, you do need to fold around those, but this can just be cut with a ruler. And don't turn that edge under. And don't just turn leave edge it under. out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes um, it even faster. Okay, but I think both of these require some skills because if you're doing this by hand, it's a lot of work. It's English paper piecing. If you're doing it by machine, that's a lot of Y seams. So I am going to sew this, but I don't want my thread to go all the way oh, over. Of course. It's got to stop uh, basically right where these two fabrics line up. Of course it does. Okay. So typically it's like, a, ooh, a quarter inch from the edge. The angle on this is not 90 or 60 I degrees. I know what you're saying. So we're going to stop our needle right in between those two seams. Come here. And when you press these back, you are going to have some a little bit of overlap. Mm. And then that's our seam allowance on our, our next step. So, I see why you're saying that you've got the Y seams yeah, down here. I, you know, I, I said when I made these, this was faster. I don't know if it was much easier. Maybe it could be a hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. Where you on these, this maybe. side, maybe you do that part by hand. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Then, of course, you've got these all splayed mm -hmm. out, and now we're going to join those together. Yeah. And so that then, is that the next step? Yeah, so your your sides here go on, and then they come up together. Yep, Okay. makes sense. Okay, we're going to get all seven sides sewn on, and then the back on as well. And this is all done while it's inside out. And you're, if you, you're removing your paper pieces as you need to. If you haven't used them, obviously you don't okay. have them there. Um, I want to show you here, we're going to imagine that I have the top all done and I've got all seven sides on here. Mm. Okay. I want to show that when I go to add, you know, I have I have to add, match this to this. That's obviously a weird angle. Um, we are going to line those up and then I pinch this. You see that there? Works really well. I pinch that out of the way. This is one of the things that English paper piecing allows for is really intricate shapes and really weird angles mm -hmm. um, or like um, not usual to quilting. Right. And then I will go in with a wonder clip. Actually, I'm gonna go from underneath and clip that in place so it doesn't move. And then I can do my stitch by hand. Right? Or by machine but, at yeah, that point. Yeah, right? I did this by machine, I think, yeah, all the way around. I can't even tell where I sewed this up. Oh, here. Okay, right wow. there. Um, I can't. Maybe put my glasses on. Yeah. Maybe I could tell. 
not. I still can't tell. How do you close that opening by hand, of course. Yeah, yeah, close yeah. the opening by hand, but every seam on here Amazing. is done by machine um, if you're doing it by hand. Okay, so done it by hand. We've got all our papers out. We've done the embroidery. This is where we're at. We've turned it inside out. Yep, turn it through the opening. Okay, ready to fill? Oh, wow, that's my favorite part. Okay. <laughs> I personally <laughs> like the lavender. What you do like you like? I. I'm, I have a little love-hate relationship with lavender, more on the hate side. Oh, no! Uh, and that's that's my problem. That's nobody else's problem. Uh, but I always go for the unscented. Well, I... Yeah. For I, you, I filled this one with lavender, though. Oh, let me smell. Yeah. Oh, yes, you did. Yeah. All right. So, well, today for you, since you did that for me, Aww. I will go with the unscented today. I always grab for lavender because I know what's in there. It's the buds, it's got the, the oil from, oils from, from France. But for you today, I will grab the unscented, okay. Bethany. So we're going, and when I first did this, I was like, I think I'm gonna need more than one bag, but one bag filled the whole project. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna tag team this. Do you wanna pour and I'll hold, or do you wanna? Yeah, <laughs> this could end up being a really fun blooper reel. Let's give it a try. All right. Let's see what happens here. Okay. And we're gonna tap and shake. Gorgeous. Wow, okay. Right. You know what? I think we need another one. I think we need another one. Ooh, okay, we're okay. doing it. One, more than, more than one. More than one. Maybe the one I did by machine kind of just ended up being a little smaller. I bet that it did. Because this one's so accurate I bet by that hand. It did. Okay, okay so. We're going for it. Fine. All right. But I did, notice I did do it. I tried, yeah. tell me when right. to stop. So maybe I lied too. So we're gonna we're gonna have you go until it fills the cup up to the blue line. Oh really? Yep, let's try that. And then I will shake and tap. Keep going? Yep. You heard it folks, she keeps telling me to go. It's, I'd say overfilling is better than underfilling. It's gonna add to the kind of integrity of this because if it's, if it's underfilled then you get a bean bag. You know, <laughs> That's it's true. A little, little floppy. So we're just gonna keep, keep. Actually, do I like that? Let's see. Oh, it's so. Oh, it's so. so okay. A little no, more. A little no, more. A little no. more. <laughs> Getting a little loopy here in the studio. <laughs> so we'll do one more cup to that blue line. Oh, okay. it smells well, so oh. good, Bethany. It's uh, lovely. It's lovely. You know what else is uh, No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so here's my trick. Uh, I just made a pin cushion, right? I'm gonna pin into this. <laughs> to keep We're it gonna closed. test it right now. Yeah. And then, ready to stitch oh, that fun. close. And I'm doing it. I, we've been here for so long. I'm gonna close this pin cushion up. We're getting yes, a finished product. We, and today. I want them to see. I want them to see the sewing one and the hand. Yeah. Um, Hand, this is the hand done one. Hand done, yeah. So I have to remember how okay. I do this. Okay. So you can talk us through how your approach and then we'll just kind of fast forward the video or something like that. So I always start with a knot on the end and then bury that knot kind of in the corner. And then I'll turn this away from me. How do I do this? I think I do kind of like a ladder stitch. I know we, you've talked about that, and I love how secure okay. that stitch yeah. is. It's unconventional. It's a little but hard. But I like it. I don't actually know if it's called a ladder stitch. That's what I call it in my brain. It's a Bethany Miller so stitch. So I'm going to draw it out for you. If I have my fabric here and here, I yep. this. Our opening. Okay. I'm going to stitch down and then across, down and then across, down and then across with my thread, and then when I pull that thread tight, almost like a corset, just pulls it together, okay? So I'm pulling tight as I go. This is obviously like the, the dramatic version of it. Um, but that's usually what I do is I'll go, I'm gonna get this under the camera. I don't know this stitch. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know, it just... Works well. Yeah. I mean, and, this is secure. And, um, We've discovered, you and I, that my quilting education, I'm a bit self-taught, so I know how to do things, but I don't know the proper names for a lot of things. That's so this okay. is another one where, I'm sure this has a, a great name. I don't know what it's called. It, you know what I'm gonna call it? It works. Yeah. Works really it, yeah. well. <laughs> 
And this is a pretty quick one. And you can do these stitches. I'm kind of doing them a little smaller because this walnut shell is so fine. Okay. Right. We'll let you keep stitching. And then when we're done, we'll get some close up gonna, shots we're gonna of, the, close of the reveal. Yep. Of, of, you know, can you tell which one was which? Okay. So I've got my whole seam sewn up. And actually, that ladder stitch I did is almost less visible than the English paper piecing. Seam. Amazing. So um, I tied a knot, I buried it, and I, I just pull my thread out through somewhere in the side so that Smart. the end is buried inside the pincushion and that gets cut flush. I know with that pulling, you're using a different weight thread with that. Uh, yeah, on this thing, because I, I usually put a lot of tension on that. Yep. Um, I am using a hand quilting thread. I know we saw this. Mm. Um, it is just thicker and stronger. Yes. Um, I, you know, for the for the fine, fine work, I like to use the fine thread. But for this last seam, I really want it to be... Flip it over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here we go. Here we go. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess... This oh one I did by gosh. hand ended up so much larger than the one I did by machine. Look at the what this is like the big sister. This is the mm -hmm. baby. This is adorable. Oh my! These are they're so both cute. beautiful. I just love how crisp and sharp these corners are. So a bag and a half, maybe bag and a of half. walnut yep. shells for the for the one that is going to be completely filled out mm -hmm. and. It, so much fun. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Bethany. And for you watching, um, you can see, you know, these types of things, you're not going to make a pincushion every week. It's not like a quilt that you're making to give. This is something that you make to, as a treasure in your sewing room. So whether you do the uh, machine version or the traditional English paper piecing, I think they're both beautiful. Be sure to grab your kits, limited amounts of that. Remember, the pattern will be an add-on to give you the option to maybe make more than one. Subscribe if you haven't already done that. Bethany, thanks for being on this video. <laughs> Me pleasure. trying to bring it the way you did. I couldn't have done this without you. And we'll see you soon on another video.